Today, we're gonna to talk about the LME7 flame safety controlling a PWM blower. PWM stands for pulse width modulation. This signal is a high frequency voltage pulse. For example, a 100% PWM signal would pr provide about 100% voltage to the blower, resulting in full speed. If we do a 50% PWM signal, there is voltage half the time on these high frequency pulses, resulting in about half the speed. So that's how this signal controls the speed of the blower. Uh, the LMB7 sends the PWM signal to the blower. The blower then sends a tachometer pulse output into the LME7, resulting in closed loop control. One of the quick notes is that the power for the blower comes from directly from line rather than coming from the LME7 itself. The LME7 doesn't want to take on the current draw or current burden um, of the PWM blower. So the PWM signal, think of it more as brakes rather than an accelerator. And let me show you. If I take the PWM signal, these are the, these are the wires here. If I remove it, the blower is going to go to high speed. Break. You plug it back in. The PWM signal essentially applies the brakes and is and is now in control. And these four wires are there's a 24 volt DC signal. There's that PWM signal going out that tachometer signal coming back in a ground wire, all with these four wires. There are three speed settings associated with a PWM blower when in operation. First speed is high fire speed, and that's labeled as P2. Then there's low fire speed, which is P1. And then there's ignition speed, which is P0. We're gonna do a short demonstration showing this operation. The green line is the PWM signal. The red is the target. Blue is our current speed. The PWM signal rises until blue is on top of red. We're now driving to ignition speed. We see the target speed dropped and the actual speed, the blue, is going down. Now the trial for ignition. The blower speed undershoots and then it kind of settles out a little bit. We are now in operation and it's now listening to the analog signal. It's driving down to low fire. And we notice that the PWM signal is fairly low. And in this example is 6%. And we see our blower speed and target speed is 13%, all controlling steadily. A nice feature is to be able to go into manual mode. And you do that by hitting the A button. Until the dot flashes and then you let go. Press and hold where it says load, and now I can manually drive up. We can see how the target speed changes in steps and the actual speed gradually increases. Now, if you're done in manual mode, you get out by hitting escape shown on the on the display you tap escape and the target speed dropped and now we're we're driving to low fire lock 83 and lock 225 are common speed faults for help troubleshooting that speed fault i recommend having the lme7 technical instructions we have the spiral bound version here, and we also have the electronic version in PDF. 
Uh, if you'd like the spiral bound version, I recommend sending an email to customer service at sccombustion.com. Uh, another helpful tool for troubleshooting a Lock 83 or 225 is an AZL remote display. This information will help you gather parameters and information to find out what's going on with the speed faults. We also have technical support over the phone uh, if you need it. That phone number is 224-366-8445. And there are several engineers awaiting your call. Some helpful parameters for troubleshooting a lock 83 are parameter 920 for the actual PWM output and parameter 936 for the actual speed percentage. And you can access the, this parameter with a remote display. Uh, and you'll need to get into service mode to access these parameters. Let me show you how to get into service mode. Take the enter button, press and hold until it reads SER for service mode. Let go. It starts with the 700 series, which is the fault history. I'm going to do back and go to 920. 920 reading PWM, actual PWM signal, and 936 is the actual speed. If the numbers are fairly close, uh, you're in good shape. If they're drastically different, you know, such as 920, which is the PWM signal, being 100, and 936 being zero, then something may be awry with wiring or the blower is not plugged in or it's not responsive. So that's one example of troubleshooting a lock 83. Another helpful parameter for troubleshooting a lock 83 is parameter 644. And this parameter is for the feedback pulses per revolution from the PWM blower. If this number is incorrect, the percentages will be wildly off causing a lock 83. Make sure to check the PWM blower manufacturer's data sheet and look for pulses per revolution and set parameter 644 on the LME7 to those pulses per revolution. To understand a speed fault, let's look at these tolerance bands. In the, in the center, we see the target speed. And in green, we see tolerance band number one. And in red, we see tolerance band two. Tolerance band one, the green one, is falls outside of that band for five seconds will cause a speed fault. Tolerance band two is if it falls outside of that band, it will immediately shut down. These tolerance bands are adjustable. Parameter 650.00 is for tolerance band one with the time element associated. Tolerance band two is 650.01 